sisters and I'd like to welcome you to another segment of the Bible Speaks. This is a Bible study program that is designed to help you better understand your Bible. And the one thing about this Bible study, it is very, very unique. What do you mean unique, Brother Greg? It is so unique, Brother Julius, and we do something that the world don't do. You know what that is? What is that, brother? We read the Bible. Praise the Lord. We read the Bible. And because we read the Bible, we ask, brothers and sisters, that you call that number that appears on the bottom of your screen. And we have people standing by to answer any question that you have according to the lesson. Now, if you, uh, uh, even if you have questions concerning other lessons that you've seen, call that number. We teach here on the Bible Speaks by subject and title. And it's our hope that we help you get a better understanding of your Bible and to prepare you for the coming of the Lord. My name is Brother Greg. I'll be your teacher for today's lesson. And reading for me is the best reader in all of Israel, Brother Julius. The title of today's lesson is The Feast of Unleavened Bread. The title of today's lesson is The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, brothers and sisters, leavening represents sin. I want to just point that out from the get-go. Unleavened represent righteousness, and clean, unclean represents sin, and clean represents righteousness. The Lord has given you uh, this feast of unleavened bread as a part of his plan for the salvation of man. He is reminding you for once a week to eat unleavened bread. Brothers and sisters, all through the Bible, God used symbolism and metaphors to teach you about sin. In this case, he used leaven and unleaven to remind you about removing sin from your lives. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is a reminder to man to walk unleavened or in righteousness for seven days. Now, God is the one that instituted, Brother Julius, the weekly cycle. Yes, sir. He, he instituted the weekly cycle. And he gave man seven days or 7,000 years to fulfill to remove sin from his life. During this feast, God requires you to eat unleavened bread for seven days. And we're going to read that a few times in the lesson. And he and, uh, and from the first day is the Sabbath day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and the seventh day is the Sabbath day as well. You ought to remove leaven from all your quarters, your home. And when Adam and Eve sinned, which has transgressed the law of God, the world became leaven. In Leviticus, the 23rd chapter and the 17th verse, these saints were baked with leaven. That means sin was in the world. And through their faith, they survived it. And they came up in the resurrection and they became the first fruits of the Lord uh, that slept. Being unleavened is a recipe. For salvation, Brother Julius. Yes, sir. So we're going to start our lesson off in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, and then you're going to skip to verse 26. Genesis 1 and verse 1, and then you're going to skip to 26. When you get it, go ahead and read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image uh -huh. after our likeness. Go ahead. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh -huh. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Go ahead. And God blessed them. And God sent unto them. 
be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth uh -huh. and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move up on the earth. Now skip down to verse 31 and continue. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Uh -huh. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we see that God created man on the sixth day. And okay, we're going to go into the second chapter and we're going to pick this up at verse one. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm doing it like this to lead us into the Feast of Unleavened Bread to show you once sin came into the world, God was thinking about us and he gave you an avenue to do every for a whole week to eat unleavened bread for a whole week to remind you to remove sin from your life. Verse one, go ahead and read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Go ahead. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Go ahead. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In was, the I had him read that next verse because I wanted you to see this is the generation of man. This is what the Lord had did, and he gave you that Sabbath day, and then he blessed that Sabbath day or that seventh day. So now, skip down to verse 7 and read that. What does it say? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Go ahead. And man became a living, living soul. soul. Now, he didn't put a soul inside of him, did he, Julius? No, sir. He said man became the soul, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh -huh. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good, good for, for food. food. Go ahead. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. See, that's a different sort of tree. The tree of life was uh, represented the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh-huh. And a river where That's good. So now skip down to verse 15 and continue. What does it say? And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Uh-huh. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest good. freely eat. That's good. Skip down to verse 18 and continue. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Now, skip down to verse 21. Now he's going to make him a help meet. Now, verse 21, what does it say? And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh that stared thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman and brought her to the man. Now the Lord made man a living soul. He didn't have a help me to nobody like him, so now he's bringing forth the woman. Go ahead and read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Go ahead. She shall be, be called, called woman, woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. Now let's look at the commandment that he gave them. Now I want you to skip back to 16 and read 2 and 16. What does it say? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely, freely eat. Go ahead. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the very day that you ate of this tree, that was the day that you was going to die, brothers and sisters. And this is what has happened to us. Adam lived to be 930 years, and he died. He did not live a whole day, because the day to the Lord was a thousand years. Yes. Go on to the third chapter, and we're going to pick this up in verse 6. 3 and 6, what does it say? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wild, Go ahead. she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, uh -huh. and gave also to her husband with her, and, and he, he did, did eat. eat. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. See, whenever you sin, it's like, it's like somebody has discovered your nakedness. So they both was naked. Go ahead and read. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, skip down to verse 9 and continue. What does it say? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh -huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Go ahead. And he said, Who told, told thee you? that thou was naked? He said, Who told you? He didn't say, did you eat off the, did you buy the apple off the tree? No. Who told you? The lie, had, that prevailing lie is still being told today. Somebody is telling people contrary to the word of God. Yes. Just like later on, we're going to read in Colossians, and they're going to try to use that, brothers and sisters, <laughs> to tell you that you do not have to keep the Lord's high Sabbaths anymore. We're reading this to you today because we want you to see God requires you to keep these days 
if you belong to him. If you circumcised, baptized, and you belong to the Lord, if you had any understanding of your own, you would know God does something. He don't do something for nothing. He is trying to save you yes. by teaching you to eat, to remove sin from your life. He's giving you a memorial seven days. He's trying to get you to do this so you can think about removing sin from your life. Where are you, Brother Julius? We at uh, verse 11. Go ahead and read. And he said, who told thee that thou that was, was naked? naked. Uh -huh. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? One more. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Ain't that something? And she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Skip down to verse 17 and continue. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, uh -huh. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Now you notice that? Now this let me know that this man is responsible for that woman. Because that woman came out of that man yes. for the Lord punished him directly because of what happened. Go ahead and read. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh -huh. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return Turn unto the, the ground. ground. Go ahead. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. The death sentence was passed on man to yes. man. Yes, sir. And from that very day we have been dying from that very day. Let's go to Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. Brothers and sisters, don't believe, don't I forget that number that appears on your screen. Call that number. If you, if you are watching any of our lessons, call the number that appears on your screen. We are waiting to answer your questions because you need to know what's real and what's memorex. You need to know <laughs> who's lying and who's telling the truth. Yes, sir. And, and, and that is the whole point of our Bible study show, because that's why we teach by subject and title. Romans 5 and verse 12. And let's, let's let the people hear what God said. Yes, Go sir. ahead and read. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world uh -huh. and death by sin. Go ahead. And so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. I saw a debate on TV, and I mean on the, uh, on, on the Internet, and they were talking. Of, they don't even know what sin is. We had these Gentile brothers trying to tell these Israelite brothers what sin was. And the brothers, instead of them reading the definition of sin, they just kept talking and kept talking. But we're going to read the definition of sin to you today. Well, uh, 1 John chapter 3, according to the Lord. Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. What does it say, Brother Junior? Whosoever committed sin. Whosoever committed sin. Transgresseth also the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. Ain't that something? For sin is the transgression of the law. Of the law. Ain't that something, Julius? From the Bible. Ain't the, directly from the Bible. Sin is, and every, everybody you see that break God's law, there is a, a reaction when they break the law. Yes, sir. Adam and Eve didn't do what the Lord said. Death came in. Yes, it's sir. always like that. Yes. So let's show them something else. Let's go to Leviticus, the, uh, Leviticus, the uh, 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23. Let's take a detour. Leviticus the 23. Because we saw, we see that sin is in the world, don't we? That's right. So now let me show them something from a future standpoint from the past. Because they're always talking about stuff has been fulfilled. This has not been fulfilled, what we're about to read. I want you to go to Leviticus 23, and I want you to pick it up at verse 16. Because we're looking into the future. We're looking at how sin is in the world and how these people have overcome sin and ended up in the first resurrection. Verse 16, what does it say? Even until the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, yes. shall you number 50 days. See, this is the Pentecost scripture, but that's not what I'm after. Go ahead and read. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So now, new meat offering is offered unto the Lord. Go ahead and read. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tits deal. Go ahead. They shall be a fine flour. Go ahead. They shall be baking with leaven. See, these are baked with leaven. Sin is in the world, brothers and sisters. You have to overcome sin by the word of God. You have to have the word of God sprinkled on on you and these people did that so sin is in the world right and death by sin right so they overcame finish that they are the first fruits unto the lord read that again for me 
You shall bring out of your habitation two weighed loaves of two tents. Now, this is a new meat offering. Go ahead and read. They shall be a fine flower. Now, Jesus was without sin. He was the sheep of the first fruit. So he was offered to God without sin. But these people had sin. They worked through the sin and they was found worthy by mm. God. Read that. They shall be baking with, with leaven. Does leaven. leaven represent sin? Go ahead and read. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. See, they are the first fruits. They became, Jesus was the first of the first fruits, but these are the first fruits of the Lord. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans 6. Peace, brother, and please. we're going to pick this up at verse 12, and then we're going to skip to verse 20. Because the Lord don't want you to, 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 to be no willful sinner. You are a practicing sinner. You're going to get cut off. And this is what the world don't want to tell you. Satan wants you to think that you can sin and all you got to do is turn over and say, God, forgive me. It don't work like that, brothers and sisters. Teach. We got to pick this up at verse 12. Look what Paul had written there. What it say, brother? Let not sin <coughs> therefore reign in your mortal body. Yes. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. Skip down to verse 20 and read that. What does it say? For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Ain't that something? When you are a servant of sin, you are free because Ain't no righteousness in you. If you are a willful sinner, a practicing sinner, a career sinner, you ain't got no righteousness in you. So the Lord is trying to fix that. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Ezekiel 20. The Lord is trying to fix that. He's trying to teach you about these high days. Everything about these high days is sweet because it is about you and salvation. The Lord gave you the Passover. It was, he was the offering to God for your sins. He gave you the Day of Atonement. It was why the Passover was offered. And, offered, and then he has given you the Feast of Unleavened Bread mm. to help you. He didn't have to give us that. No, sir. To help you remember to remove sin out of your life and walk unleavened, brothers and sisters. That's what this feast is all about. And I'm inviting you right now to come on out with your families to the Israel of God so you can learn even more stuff how to defend yourself hmm. against Satan and against sin. We're going to pick this up at verse 10, Ezekiel 20 and verse 10, because I want you to see that God gave you these high days because it was a sign between you and him. Go ahead and read, brother. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes yes. and showed them my judgment, yes. which if a man do, he shall <coughs> even live in them. You see that? Because you're already alive, so he's talking about eternal life. If you do this, you shall live. You're already alive, Julius. Right. So he's talking about live eternally. Continue to read. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbath. Say it again. I gave them my Sabbath. With an S. Because you have a weekly Sabbath and you have seven annual Sabbaths. Teach. So he said, I gave you my Sabbaths to be what? To be a sign between me and them. See, you can't get around that, brothers and sisters. If you down with Jesus, then you, and he gave you these Sabbaths yes, to be sir. a sign between you and him. So how do you connect with him? By keeping the Lord's Sabbaths with an S. Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, the memorial blowing on the trumpet, yes. the day of atonement. Yes. Tabernacles. Yes. Eight. The Lord wants you yes. to be a part of him and be a sign between you and him. Continue to read. That start, they, start at 12 again. Moreover, also, I gave them my Sabbath. Yes. To be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified that them. That sets you apart from the rest of the people that don't get down with him. This is why the Lord wants you to do. He gave you the baptism that you must be baptized in his name. But you got people baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right. That is not a name. It's a title. Title. You are supposed to be sanctified, set apart, so the Lord can look from heaven and see you. Let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Back to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because I want to show you something. Because the Feast of Unleavened Bread has two kicks the 15th day of the first month is when the Lord broke his church out of Egypt. Right. And then the next seven days, he wants you to eat unleavened bread to remind you that you came out of a sinful uh, 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 Egypt and you're going to walk in newness of life. Eat. See, this is what we're trying to get <laughs> you to see. Verse 1. Brother Julius, what did he say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, What did he say? Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, uh -huh. which you shall prepare. Hold on now. The feast of who? The feast of the Lord, and brother. And then, then it says the Lord spake to who? Moses. So Moses ain't got no laws, do he? No, sir. Look, Moses take instructions from the Lord, don't he? 
And he told him to speak to the children of Israel. And tell him what, Julius? Go speak back. unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. And say unto them what concerning saying? the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Which, shall, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation. See, most people don't know what a convocation is. Mm. It's a holy gathering. Yes, sir. See, the Lord instituted a uh, uh, weekly worship right in here. I'm going to show you that. Continue to read. Even these are my, my feasts. feasts. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest Go ahead. and holy convocation. See what I'm saying? He told you the seventh day is a holy convocation. You cannot read nowhere in the Bible where the Lord calls Sunday a holy convocation. It ain't there. We are just pointing these things out because when you stand before the master, you will not have no excuse. None. Because he didn't pull the cloak off you already because he didn't give you everything you needed to be saved. Continue to read. Again, three, Go six ahead. days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath, Sabbath of rest. rest. Go ahead. A holy convocation. Uh -huh. You shall do no work therein. Go ahead. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in, in all, all your, your dwellings. So it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Skip down to verse 5 and continue. What does it say? In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. He didn't say seven days, you know, you can eat it if you want to. You must. He said you must eat unleavened bread. Continue to read. In the first day you should have a holy convocation. You should do no servile work therein. Go ahead. But you should often, often made by fire to the Lord seven days. Uh -huh. And the seventh day is a holy convocation. You should do no servile work therein. Jesus, once he died and went back to heaven, the, the, the uh, offerings made by fire, we don't do anymore. So now, but he said on the first day is a holy convocation. Yep. You're supposed to come here and feast with us. And on the seventh day is a holy convocation convocation. Let's move on, Brother Julius. But now we also learn too, Julius, uh -huh. that the Passover is on the 14th day. Yes, sir. And you know, sisters and brothers, they could not have left Egypt on the Passover because he told them to stay in your house. Come out, don't come out your house. There you go. So now in the 15th day was when the Lord uh, 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 sprang Israel and the mixed multitude and they all left Egypt. Let's go to Colossians, the second chapter. <coughs> Colossians, the second chapter. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm only reading this because I want you to know what they going to, you know, these slick servants of Satan is going to try to get you. They're mm. going to read this to you and they're going to tell you that you don't have to do what God just told you to do. So now we're going to pick this up at verse 16. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16, because they're going to read this to you. And they telling you, now we read that the Lord said you're supposed to do this. Here. Keep it. But then they going to read this to you. Read on. What does it say? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink uh -huh. or in respect of any holy day. Now, they talking like Paul is telling the Gentiles. Paul the Israelite, the Benjamite, is going to tell the Gentiles not to do what Jesus just told you to do. That's a lake of fire offense for Paul. But Paul is just letting them know, don't let nobody talk you out of doing yes. this. Start at the top of 16 again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day Go ahead. or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Go ahead. Which are a shadow of things to come. Which are a shadow of... Why would he tell you not to do it if it was a shadow of things to come? It's a shadow of things to come. There brother. you go. Refinish that. But the body is of Christ. Yes. Let's go, to, let's go back to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus 12. Make it plain. But the body is Christ. Why would Paul risk his salvation on telling somebody they don't have to do what Jesus just told them to do? Uh, Exodus 12 and 33. Exodus 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 33. 12 and 33, what it say, brother? And the Egyptians were urging upon the people yes. that they might send them out of the land in haste. Uh -huh. For they said, we be all dead, dead men. Go ahead and read. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, uh -huh. their needed troughs, 
being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. So they took the dough before. Why? They didn't have time for it to rise. Skip down to verse 37 and continue. What does it say? And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, uh -huh. about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. That's a lot of dudes, man. Yeah, Go ahead is. and read. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, every, even very much cattle. Go ahead. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. Now check that out now. They left on the 15th day. Yes. And they baked unleavened cakes because they didn't have no leaven. This represented uh, uh, righteousness and holiness because the Lord done sanctified them. Yes. Continue to read. For it was not leavened. Because they it was were, what? It was not leavened. Go ahead. Because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Uh -huh. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now, let's go to Numbers, the 33rd chapter. Let's see what day they left on, because this has always been a big argument. What day did the children of Israel leave on? Now, some people honor the Lord's scripture by, by using the 14th and the 15th day, putting them together, making them one day. Mm. But I, we are showing you today that... This is not true. The Passover was on the 14th day. They had to stay in their home right. because the death angel had to pass through. But now, and then the Lord said when he saw the blood, he was going to pass over you. Right. But now on the 15th day, as you can see, the army of Israel and the mixed multitude left Egypt. Yes. Now, we're going to let the book tell us this. Numbers 33 and verse 1. What does it say? These are the journeys of the children of Israel, uh -huh. which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. With their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Go ahead. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. Now, Moses kept the record. Now, if you can't believe nobody, you should be able to believe. I mean, if you ain't going to believe the Lord, you should believe, you should believe Moses. Yes. But you should believe the Lord because the Lord is the one who told Moses. Go ahead and continue. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. What did he say, Julius? And they departed from Ramses in the first month uh -huh. on the 15th day of the first month. Hold it, hold it. O on the 14th day? On the 15th day uh -huh. of the first month. On the morrow after, after the Passover, Go ahead. the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the something? sight of all the Egyptians. So we can see they left out on the 15th day. On the 15th day. Let's move on. Let's go to go back to Exodus, uh, the 12th chapter, Brother Julius, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15 this time because the Lord is going to give some instructions here. See, I think the people just hate to obey in the Lord. That's it. I just think they don't have no faith in him and they can't see how he's trying to save you. All you got to do is believe and do what he say. Verse 15, what does it say? Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Uh-huh. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your house. See what it say? You got to put leaven out of your houses. Go ahead and read. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. You see what I'm saying? You believers out there, you best believe the Lord ain't playing about this here. Go ahead and read. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. See, the, 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 uh, it's, a whole, it's a weak service. So on the first day is a holy convocation, and then on the seventh day, he's going to let you know it's a holy convocation. But you are supposed to eat unleavened bread. Take all the leaven out of your house, yes. reminding you, don't sin. Continue to read. What does it say? And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy, holy convocation, convocation to, to you. you. Go ahead. No manner of work shall be done in them. Uh -huh. Say that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. Go ahead. And you shall observe the feast, feast of, of unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. Uh -huh. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Ain't that something? Now, we read that the feast of unleavened bread was on the 15th day, right? Yes, sir. Now, he just told you when he brought you out of Egypt, didn't he? 15. Continue to read. Therefore, shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance, ordinance forever. Skip down to verse 19 and check him out. Check out what the Lord said again. Go ahead and read. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Uh -huh. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, Woo! whether he be a stranger or a Born See, the Lord the don't land. leave nobody out because he is the God of all men. Yes. Israel is his priest. We are supposed to inform you of what thus says the Lord. Yes. But the stranger has always supposed to have been part of the congregation of Israel. Peace, brother. That's why I always invite the stranger, come on to class. Get this word and save yourself because if you don't, 
It's going to be some weeping and gnashing of teeth in these last days. Continue to read. Verse One 20. More. Go ahead. You shall eat nothing leaven. In all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. You see what he said? For these seven days, this is how we're supposed to get down. Numbers, the 15th chapter. Let's bring the stranger. Let's make the stranger part of this. Numbers 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Because everybody think this is Israel's show. It is our show when it comes to teaching you, but as you can Make see, it plain. in the wilderness, the Lord didn't care nothing about you being Israel. Hmm. He killed many of Israelites out there in the wilderness. You spoke pure Hebrew. You wore the fringes and the frontlets, and he still killed you for your wickedness. Peace, brother. You best to go and do it the way he told you to do it and stop messing with other people and do your job. Teach them the word of the living God. Verse 15. Uh, uh, numbers 15 and 15. What does it say? One ordinance <coughs> shall be both for you yes. of the congregation yes. and also for the stranger that sojourn with you. Uh -huh. An ordinance forever in your generation. Go ahead. As you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One more. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourn with you. What you do, Israel, the stranger is supposed to do Teach. as well. Galatians. Galatians 5 and 9. One verse. Galatians 5 and 9. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. One verse. Because the Lord going to tell you about sin in his own way. The Lord have a way of showing you and sharing with you about sin. Like I say, you stand before God with all this knowledge and all this yes. book and all this teaching. Yes. You will not have a prayer if you don't get this right. Verse 9. What does it say? A little leaven. Leaven at the whole lump. If you become a career sinner, if you start sinning, you're going to end up being a career sinner if you don't stop. Let's move on. Let's go to Proverbs 8 chapter because the Lord going to let you know. You don't love him, you hate him. If you, and if you hate him, you love death. That's what he going to let you know. Proverbs 8 and verse 35. Because, brothers and sisters, we are trying to help you. Just like the Lord is trying to help you. Jeez, Do you notice the Lord ain't standing up on the roster preaching to you? He has left that job to men. God's business is men. Teach. And we teach men. Pick it up in verse 35. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 35. What does it say, brother? For whoso findeth me. Find his life. And that's for sure. You find the Lord and you do it his way, you done found eternal life. What else does it say? And shall obtain favor, favor of the Lord. Go ahead. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Yes. All that hate me love death. And that's a fact. And we're talking the second death. Because he'll put you down now and we'll throw all that dirt on, you, on, on that little bed we put you in the ground in. And then he'll wake you up <laughs> and then he will destroy that you is right. perfectly. Keep so running. now, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians. Chapter 3, and we're going to pick this up at verse 5. Because you are supposed to go from that old man to this new man. And this is how you're supposed to work. Because when you become unleavened, then you keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse 5, what does it say? Mortify, therefore, your members. Change yourself. Go ahead and read. Put you up on the earth. Fornication. Yes. Unclean. You got to stop doing that. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Filthiness. Go Evil ahead. Evil concuspices. Yes. And covetousness, which is idolatry. idolatry. You know the Lord hate that. Go ahead and read. For which things take the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You see what he said? The wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. Read on, Brother Julius. In the which you also walk sometimes. Yes. When you lived in them. See what I'm saying? When you used to walk like that, but you got to make a change mm -hmm. here. Go ahead and read. But now... You also put off all these. Yes. Anger. Yes. Wrath. Uh-huh. Malice. Remember that word, malice. Go ahead. Blasphemy. Uh-huh. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Go ahead. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man yes. with his deeds. See, the old man do that kind of stuff. Go ahead and read. And have put on the new man. Now you got to put on this new man, because that's now, now you are walking unleavened. Go ahead and read. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Which is renewed in knowledge at the, at the image of Jesus that created you. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Let's get another look at a dude that didn't change his game, Julius. Let's look at this dude that changed his game. Because that's what the Lord wants you to do. Yes. Repent. And be baptized in the name of Jesus. He wants the whole world to come to repentance. That's why he started John the Baptist off. 
with the baptism of repentance. Yes. Because he wants you to start being sorry for what you did, brothers and sisters. And what better way to show him is to keep his annual Sabbath. Ezekiel 18 and 27. Ezekiel 18 and verse 27. What does it say? Again. When the wicked man turns away from his wickedness. Because he turned away because he didn't become unleavened. <laughs> Go ahead and read. That he has committed and doeth the thing which is lawful and right. Uh -huh. He shall save his soul alive. Tell him why. Because he considered and turned away from all his transgressions uh -huh. that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Once I told you. We talking about a dude that's already living. So we talking about dying the second death. Verse 30. What does it say? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one to his ways, saith the Lord of God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Yes. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. What is sin? Sin is the transgression, transgression. of the law. So he said, turn. He said, turn yourself from all your transgressions. Yes, sir. What is wrong with the Lord telling you what sin is? You know what it is? You are a servant of Satan, and you do not want to acknowledge Peach. your faults. So now, what, did you read 31? No, sir. Read it. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, uh -huh. and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Ain't that something? Why should you die, O house of Israel? Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Brothers and sisters, we, the Lord has tried to get you to see this. This Old Testament ain't been fulfilled. This Old Testament is trying to save your yes, life. Sir. The New Testament is testifying to the Old. So pay attention to what we are reading. We're going to pick this up at verse 15. What does it say, Julius? Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. Again, he said it again, didn't he? Yes. Go ahead and read. As I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abel, uh -huh. for in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Again, the feast of unleavened bread on the fifteenth day, he said. He said, and thou that came out and when thou came out of Egypt. Yes. Because you came out on the fifteenth day, not the fourteenth day. Continue to read. And the Feast of Harvest, the first fruits of thy labor. Now it's Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, go ahead. Which thou hast sown in the field, and the Feast of Ingathering. That is the, at the last uh, Feast of the Year, which is Tabernacles, yes. go ahead. Which is in the end of the year, uh -huh. when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Go ahead. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Ain't that something? Now, Jesus is going to come. You go read Ezekiel 43. You see the Lord come, and he is back on earth, and he goes into his temple. Let's see if we're going we to uh, go to Ezekiel 45, brother Julius. We're going to see if the Lord requires you to keep Passover and unleavened bread once he returns. Uh, one verse, Ezekiel 45, and we're going to pick this up at verse 21. Ezekiel 45, and we're going to pick this up at verse 21. What does it say, brother? In the first month, in the 14th day of the month, you shall have the Passover. Go ahead. A feast of seven, seven days. days. Go ahead. Unleavened bread <coughs> shall be eaten. Ain't that something? So now even when the Lord returns, you are supposed to, during the millennium period, or what we call a thousand years of peace, you are still going to keep these high Sabbath days. Mm. Let's go back to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Exodus 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Exodus 12 and verse 18. Julius, what does it say? In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at evening. See, that's eight days he just read. Why eight days? Because you eat unleavened bread on the Passover. So now from the 14, you count it up yourself. Yep. You know, if you can't do it in your head, you know, use your fingers, you know. But <laughs> but on on the uh from the 14th day to the 21st day is eight days. This is perfect, Julius. Yes. Because the Lord is showing you, but during the seven days of unleavened bread, you are you are supposed to rid it out of your house. Yes. Stop sinning. Treat your kids with some respect. Treat your wife with some Teach. respect. Walk and talk like a servant of the living God. This is what this uh, represents. Go on to the 13th chapter, Julius, and pick it up at verse 6. 13 
and 6. What does it say, brother? Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Again, go ahead. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Go ahead. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. You see that? And no leavened bread shall be seen with you. Why? Because we talk in sin. We talk in spiritually. Don't Eat no leavened bread during the days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Y'all understand what we're saying? Call the number. If you don't, call that number that appears on the bottom of your screen. Leavening represents sin and unrighteousness. The Lord wants you to walk unleavened like Jesus. We talking a spiritual walk. Yes. But if you walk in the spirit, yes. you're going to get this. Let's go to the 8th chapter <laughs> of Romans and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 8 and 1. What does it say, brother Julius? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, he just read a whole lot right yes. there. He said, Dad, you will not be condemned if you walk in the spirit. He said, walk not after the flesh, but in the spirit. Yes. So if you're walking in the spirit, that means you are unleavened, brothers and sisters. Continue to read, brother. What does it say? We have verse 4. Verse 4. What does it say? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled Feel in, in us. us. In us. Go ahead. Who walk not after the flesh, Go ahead. but after the spirit. Ain't that up? Walking unleavened. Go ahead and read. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things Go of the, the spirit. spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded is, is life, life and, and peace. peace. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read, brother. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. Ain't that something? Neither indeed can maybe, be. Maybe that's why these false ministers and these brothers out here that ain't got no understanding. Right. Maybe they hate God because it says they have enmity against God. And is they not subject to the law of God? Right. So that says it all right there. You tell people that you don't have to keep God's law, then you hate God mm -hmm. and you and you hate the law of God. Pick it up from there. What does it say? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Ain't that something? You in the flesh, you cannot please God. That's why Julius started out. There's no condemnation to them that walk uh, uh, not after the flesh, right. but after the spirit. You walk after the flesh. You're going to be condemned. Yes. And that's what he's saying. Yes, Sit down to verse 10 and read that, Brother Julius. What does it say? And if Christ be in you. Now, if the Lord be in you by you keeping his word, go ahead. The body is dead yes. because of sin. Yes. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Go ahead, brother. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. The spirit of the Father is in you that raised up Jesus from the dead. What does it say? Well, in you. Yes. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Ain't that something? He gonna quicken you. He gonna make you alive. He's gonna give you that glorified yes. body. Skip down to verse 14 and read that. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Go ahead. they are the sons of God. Ain't that something? You are led by the Spirit of God. You walk in the Spirit. You're gonna become a son of God. Deep. Let's go to uh, John chapter 6. John 6. Beautiful, And we're brother. gonna pick this up at verse 54. Now this is another way that he's telling you how to walk Unleavened, because he did, didn't he say, if Christ abide in you, right? Let's see about this abiding. We're gonna pick it up at verse fifty-four, verse fifty-four, because even the brothers back there with him didn't understand this. So I can kind of see why y'all don't understand, because y'all don't like reading the Bible and y'all don't believe what the what? Bible say. You understand? So they, so if if Christ gonna abide in you, yes. Then you're going to be his. That's what, ain't that what it said? You read that. So now, we're going to pick this up at verse 54. 6 and 54. What it say, brother? Whoso eateth my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, uh -huh. and I will raise him up at the last day. Y'all got to know he ain't talking about biting off of his arm and drinking his blood. You can't do that. So he's not talking about that. But what he's talking about is bread, wine. It goes in the mouth. Yes. It goes inside you because this body houses the word of God. Yes. Continue to read. I'm going to show you that. Go ahead and read. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Go ahead. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Again, he said it. Go ahead and read. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. Go ahead. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Uh huh. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna and are dead. Uh huh. 
He that eateth of this bread shall live, live forever. forever. Go ahead, read, boy. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Uh -huh. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard, hard saying. Who, Who can, can hear, hear it? it? Go ahead, read, boy. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do this, this offend, offend you? you? Uh-huh. What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, uh -huh. it is the Spirit that quickened it. Didn't the Lord tell you to walk in the Spirit? Yes. He told you if you live by the Spirit, you shall live. Yes. Continue to read. It is the Spirit that, that quickened it. it. Uh -huh. The flesh profited nothing. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are Oh, life. So all he was telling you is to walk in the word, brothers and sisters. That is what he's saying. This is not that hard. So we're going to let Peter go ahead and tell you what I just told you. Verse 66, what it say? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Read it, brother. Then said Jesus unto to the twelve, will you also go away? Uh-huh. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we, we go? go. Uh-huh. You has the word of eternal life. He just told you his word was spirit. He's told Jesus, and in other places we read, if you walk in the spirit, you shall live. Yes. And this is what he's trying to tell you. This is how you walk unleavened. This is how you walk, walk unleavened, brothers and sisters. That's why this feast is so important. Let's go to Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs. Brother, the uh, first chapter. Man. Proverbs, the first chapter. You, you see that? You see, see how it, clear brother. that is? Crystal. Why is it the world having a problem with keeping the law of God or the spirit of God? Miss Taunt. Or why won't they keep the Lord's high Sabbath days that they keep in the New Testament as well? Many false prophets shall arise, brother. They hear. They hear in groves because they are teaching you of how to get to the lake of fire as fast as possible. Remember what the Lord said and what Julius read. He read that all those that hate the Lord love death. death. And the Lord is trying to get you to see that he love you. But all you got to do is keep his commandments. Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to read one verse, Brother Julius. Verse 23. Proverbs chapter 1 in verse 23. When I, when I understood what the Lord was trying to do with these high days, I fell in love with them. Because if I keep these high days yes. according to the scripture, yes, sir. I am guaranteed a slot in the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. Because they point to salvation. Salvation. Brothers and sisters, Julius and I, and everyone that's doing this show, our pastor, the brothers in the, in the back, uh, 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 the technical brothers, we are all, and you out there, we are all auditioning for this next life. Yes, sir. We, we, that's why your parents say you to be good, do this here, do that there. Don't kill nobody, don't steal, don't covet. You are auditioning for the next life. And a part of this great play and a part of this audition is not eating unleavened bread in the time upon it. That's it. To point you towards salvation. So now, Proverbs 1 and verse 23. The Lord going to tell you, turn, turn at his, at his correction. Go ahead and read. Turn you <coughs> at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Ain't that something? He said, turn at his correction. Behold. He said, I mean, he said turn at his correction. Behold, I will pour out my yes. spirit yes. unto you, yep. and I will make known my words unto you. This is what ministers are supposed to do. Yes. Make known the words of the Lord unto you. Ain't that what... Jesus told you that he was going to be a, uh, Jesus told you when he was in his full strength that he was going to be a light to the Gentiles. Yes, right? sir. But then we saw Paul quote that he was going to be a light to the Gentile. Did Paul nudge the Lord out the way and do the job? Absolutely. No. He, what he did was he did exactly what the Lord wanted him to do. Yes. He was going to be the light because he was the apostle to the, to Gentiles. the Gentiles. He was going to shine the light of the truth. Let us shine this light on you. Come out to the Israel of God. And let us shine this light on you. Let's move on. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Ezekiel 36. And we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Because he said, he said, turn at his reproof, didn't he? So let's let the Lord sprinkle some clean water on you. Ezekiel 36 and verse 25. Ezekiel 36 <laughs> and 25. What does it say? 
Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, uh-huh. and you shall be clean. Yes. From all your filthiness and from all your idols See, this will is I walking, cleanse you. This is walking unleavened. He said, the Lord, and the Lord said, turn and his reproof. Yes. Continue to read. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Ain't that some? A new heart, a new mind. Teach. And a new spirit, which is the word of God. Did yes. the Lord say my word is spirit? Yes. He said, and I'm going to put this within you. Go ahead and read. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Yes. And I will give you a heart of flesh. He's going to give you a new mind, a new way of thinking. Because this mind is corrupted yes. by the things of this world, carnal. brothers and sisters. It, carnal. That's a perfect word he said. You got a carnal mind. Continue to read, brother. And I will put my spirit within you. I'm going to put my word within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. See, that's what the word of God will do. Yes, It'll sir. change you. It'll stop you from putting up an idol in the middle of your living room on a day that Satan told you to, to worship that idol. You put lights on it. You put the lights all on your windows and all that. That is an idol. We read mm. idolatry was something that the Lord hated. He hates it. So now he said, I will put my spirit within you yes. and cause you to walk in my statutes. Finish that. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Skip down to verse 31 and read that for me. Then what? shall you remember your own evil, evil ways, ways. Uh-huh. and your doings that were not good. You see what I'm saying? Once he put that in your mind, yes. you're going to think, man, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have been worshiping like that. Chief, Who told me to keep Sunday? He said, and then shall you remember Remember your own evil ways yes. and, and your doing that were not, not good. good. Go ahead. And she loathed yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities uh-huh. and for your abomination. See, that's how the cleansing process starts. You clean yourself up. You repent. You realize you was wrong and you change Teach. your ways. Now, let's see where this spirit that the Lord said he going to put within you. Let's see where it dwells. First Corinthians chapter three. We're going to pick it up at verse 16, 3 and 16, brother, because this is the temple that you should be worried about. Teach. The temple that the Lord put way, 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 way out in the wilderness, you didn't go in there anyway. But then the word dwells in your temple. Yes, sir. Let's read about it. Verse 16, what does it say? Know ye not that you are the temple of God? He said you are the temple of God. Go ahead and read. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. What spirit? The spirit we've been talking about. Yes. The word of God. Yes. It dwells in you. This is what dwells in you. You talking about defiling your temple or somebody spray, uh, spray with graffiti on these walls? This ain't the temple. This is a building that we, we have the holy convocation in. Teach. But this is the temple. Yes. You don't want to defile this temple. Continue to read what he say. If any man defile the temple of God, uh-huh. him shall stop, God. Stop. Dist- he say, if any man uh-huh. defile the temple of God, yes. it say him. You see that word him? Him. H-I-M. Him what? Shall God destroy. See, because you the temple. So now the word of God is housed in you. When you do something contrary to the Lord, right. you done defiled your temple. If you don't keep them high days, you done defiled your temple, Teach. according to what we just read. He said, him, you shall God destroy. Go ahead and read. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Jesus said, all those that hate him love death. Yes. You keep that in the back of your mind. Because this is what he's trying to tell you. Yes. The word of God dwells inside of you. Let's look at it again. Let's go to John 6 and 32. Because this is the bread. This is the unleavened bread that you should be eating. Verse 32. John 6 and verse 32. Man, this is some sweet Sweet. scripture, man. Sweet. How sweet. 6 and 32. Because I like I tell you all the time, brothers and sisters, go on YouTube. Look at look at the lesson. Because we are trying, we are, we are doing lessons straight from the Bible. If you can't see this, you are blind and dead. Because the Lord is trying to save and you. And showing the people where to find them. There you go. We read the scripture to you. And also, which I didn't say, forgive me, if you can't keep up. Write the scriptures down at your leisure and then read them later and then call the number if you got any questions. Hmm. We're going to pick it up at verse 32. What does it say, brother? 
Then Jesus said unto them, What did he say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, yes. but my father gave, gave you the you true bread. bread from heaven. Go ahead. For the bread of God is he which coming down from heaven and giving life unto the world. See, this is the unleavened bread. This is the bread of the spirit. This is what you are living by. This is what he said he put inside you that caused you to walk in his, in his statues. Verse 35, Brother Julius, read to him what the Bible say. What it say? And Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. I am the bread of life. Go ahead. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Go ahead. And he that believe on me shall never thirst. Ain't that something? He said in another place in John 11, he said, if you believe on him, you shall never yes. die. Yes, yes. Because he's not talking about the death, the first death. He's talking about the second death. Peace, brother. Skip down to verse 48 and read that. Let him, let him tell you who he is again. Go ahead and read. I am that bread of life. Read it, brother. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Go ahead. This is the bread which coming down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. He said, I am the living bread. That came down from heaven. Read it. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Ain't that something? Go ahead. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life, life of, of the world. world. Ain't that something, brothers and sisters? Praise the Lord. This is something that we all need. Ain't no perfect man or perfect woman. But then but practice makes perfect. And that is what we need to do. Exodus chapter 13. And we're going to pick it. We're going to read one verse. Verse 3. Exodus chapter 13, and the Lord going to tell you to remember this here. Remember when he broke you out of Egypt. Yes. Exodus 13 and 3, what it say? And Moses said unto the people, remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of the hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. On the 15th day yes. of the first month, finish it. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Ain't that something? Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Let's look at it again. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. This is how you walk unleavened. This is how you talk unleavened. I love it. This is how you obey the Lord by walking spiritually. Verse yes. 22, what does it say? Verse 4 and 22, what does it say? That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, yes. which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. See, you put off that old conversation. When you, when you have been baptized and yes. cleansed and you walking uh, unleavened, yes. you put that off. Go yes. ahead and read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's the second time he read that. Go ahead and read. And that you put on the new man, uh -huh. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. holiness. Didn't he say he's going to sanctify yes, you sir. and the, the weekly sanctify? Sabbath, I mean, those annual Sabbaths are assigned between you and your God. Yes. Verse 31, what it say? Let all bitterness and wrath yes. and anger and clamor and evil <coughs> speaking be put away from you with all malice. Remember I told you about that word malice? Will put, to, to be put away from you, <coughs> verse 32, what it say? And be ye kind one to, to another, another uh -huh. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, okay. hath forgiven you. Let's go to 1 Peter, the second chapter. First Peter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Such Be knowledge. Because we need to walk like the Lord walked. He gave you this, these things, and when he was alive on earth, he kept Passover, unleavened bread. Yes. You can read that. Tabernacles, you can read that in the book. Because he went up and he preached on Tabernacles. Yes, he did. So now, verse 21, what does it say? For even hereunto were you called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example Sample. that you should follow his steps. Go ahead. Who did no sin. See, he was unleavened. He did no sin. Go ahead. Neither was God found in his mouth. One last place. 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. When you get it, hit it. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6. What does it say? Your glory is not good. Uh-huh. Know ye not that a little leaven, leaveneth. The whole, whole lump. lump. Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump uh -huh. as you are unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ, our Passover, Over. is sacrificed for us. Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. No, no malice, no wickedness. Go ahead. But with the unleavened bread of oh, sincerity, sincerity and, and truth. truth. Brothers and sisters, we thank you for joining us tonight on The Bible Speaks. And we hope you learn something from this lesson. Yes. Because Jesus said again, all those that hate me love death. Love we death. thank you for your time.